Heather, it starts early. Brainwashing. From the first learn to read books, it's already there. Children's films reinforce desire. A woman must have an elaborate wedding. As the girl grows up, this intensifies at every step. She's the prom queen, the envy of her friends, and of course, there's the faceless man she marries. He doesn't matter. A girl does not become a woman until she has a luxurious wedding. Flowers. Dancing. Don't forget about a beautiful dress. Wearing a dress for several hours after the ceremony is expected. The food, the cake, the toast are all part of the experience. I had my wedding. This is one of my favorite memories. I would change all this if I could run away with someone who would love me until the day they die. My name is Heather Cummins. I grew up like Heather Winslow. I just turned 30 and have a five-year-old son, Cody. I've never worried about my appearance. I wear makeup and dress nicely, but I'm a little overweight. I was overweight in high school when I got married, and I still am what people call an apple or a pear shape. I am a very caring person. I often lend a shoulder to cry on more than I should admit. My best friends call me a Girl Scout. There is no Mr. Cummins in my life. He traded me for a new model, one without children. This happened when Cody was not yet one year old. I work as a paralegal and my ex is a lawyer. New Mrs. Cummins was a secretary in the skyscraper where his legal offices are located. My alimony and child support are not enough to live on, so I never left my job as a paralegal. I have never worked and do not work in the same office as my ex. From the moment the summons was served on me, my ex did not spend a single minute with his son. In a typical legal maneuver, he took a DNA test of Cody before agreeing to pay child support. I have never cheated on him, either emotionally or physically. I am not like that. Jillian. It was my dream. I started planning it when I was a child. I played it. I dressed up my dolls for this occasion. My Halloween costume was a wedding dress. An extravagant wedding was my top priority. Until I met Carter. He became my top priority. I wanted him more than I can describe. Carter and I married young. We met when I was a freshman in college. He worked in a bookstore. My grades dropped that year because I spent too much time with Carter, who taught me how fun sex could be. We ran away the summer before my third year. I wanted a big wedding, but my parents lived paycheck to paycheck. Although I really wanted my big ceremony, my concerns about who would pay for it and how won out. Both families were not happy with our decision. I was accumulating significant student loan debt that continued to grow after our marriage. Our honeymoon was spent in a mobile home that we borrowed from my grandparents. National parks were our playground. Carter was the breadwinner while I continued my education. He is my knight in shining armor and has never complained about our one-sided arrangement. I was able to receive several scholarships, which helped ease my conscience. After graduating from law school, I passed the bar exam, although not the first time. After landing a position with a reputable law firm, I received a significant signing bonus and a good salary. Since our financial situation has improved significantly, I have raised the possibility of having a big wedding to renew our vows. Carter is not happy with this idea. It's eating me up inside. I started to hold it against Carter that he wouldn't let me fulfill my childhood dream. One of the lawyers in my office talked me into having a fake wedding. We plan to do this at the upcoming convention. Carter. My name is Carter Ficino, and I've been married to Jillian for eight years. We had a whirlwind romance and eloped. I don't think we forced things. We couldn't stand being apart from each other. It was very difficult to get good grades while being so distracted. We were both in college, with Jillian two years younger than me. I continued my studies and received a master's degree. My dissertation went quite well. After graduate school, I found a great job that allowed Jillian to continue her education. We didn't even have to leave our apartment near campus. When Jillian started law school, we put down a deposit on a nice starter home near her new campus. Jillian is very smart and her grades continued to shine. She spent three years in law school. Without kids to pull in, we gradually paid off our student loans. They will not be repaid anytime soon. 
In my free time, I transform our little starter home into something special. Jillian mentioned several times that we should renew our marriage vows so she could have her dream wedding. I don't care about the wedding, and I firmly believe that we have more important things to do with money. We're up to our necks in student loans, and home improvements weren't cheap. About six months ago, in retrospect, Jillian began to treat me with a certain amount of contempt. I didn't pay attention, justifying it with the stress of her job. Unfortunately, her constant nagging also led to a decline in our sex life. It's like I don't know her anymore. I recently met a man named Dario Atrint, who is helping me figure out this problem. The problem turned out to be much more serious than I could have imagined. Coco. I'm married to the man of my dreams. Enrico was fascinated by me. He used all his charms. As an attorney in a large law firm, he earns a very good salary. I miss my friends with praise about Enrico. This is what I do best. We got married six months after we met. Being innocent on my wedding night was my top priority. Although Enrico did everything he could to persuade me to have sex before the wedding, I won and he made love to me on our wedding night. My friends tease me by calling me Saint Coco. Although I had never been intimate with any man before, I watched videos and read stories about how to please a man. Enrico's emotions tell me that I'm pretty good at sex. We don't have children yet, but our target date is quickly approaching. People think I'm more of a pretty picture than something significant. They are very wrong. Although I work in sales, I am a very skilled negotiator. Knowing how to distract the opposite sex is very important for closing some deals. I'm still a saint. I never did anything to jeopardize my marriage. The men in my office try to seduce me. I have a good life with Enrico, and I don't plan to ruin it. Although I have been faithful, I recently found out that the man I married is a cheater. I started working with a man named Dario Atrint, who is helping me figure out this problem. Heather. As a recent graduate, I was absolutely thrilled when I landed a job as a paralegal at Blindum and Robham. I was married for a year and everything seemed fine. After my son Cody was born, everything changed. It didn't take long before my ex-husband left and I was handed papers for divorce. Having a job is my salvation. I easily forget about my personal problems thanks to the endless demands on my time. I was seduced by one of the firm's lawyers. Enrico was very charming and seemed to know exactly what to say and do to get me to go on a date with him. At the time, I was not his assigned paralegal and did not know that he was married. Although several men in the office showed interest in dating me, Enrico won. I deeply regret this decision. After dinner, on our only date, I felt slightly weak. Enrico took me to my apartment. After I paid the nanny, we started kissing. I was too weak to repel his advance. No matter how much I tried to deny his intentions, I was too weak, and soon we had sex. There was no pleasure. I felt disgusted. Enrico disappeared when I woke up. This bastard had the nerve to greet me at work. Thank you for the evening, dear. You were great. Let's do this again, and soon. I stared at him. If I thought I had a chance to file a report of abuse, I would do it. I needed this job because it paid well and the cost of daycare was significant. I considered this one of life's lessons. I had no doubt that this bastard had drugged me with something. I've never felt the need for revenge until now. The what, when and how was still to be determined, but I planned to shove it up his ass when the opportunity arose. Since then, I have never accepted offers from my colleagues. That doesn't mean I wasn't tempted. There were a few solo lawyers who seemed really nice, but I decided not to mix work and pleasure. Fate can be cruel. I am assigned to be Enrico's paralegal and the paralegal of his latest conquest, Jillian Charms. Jillian helped me a lot. She is an insurance lawyer and had only been with us for six months when Enrique took advantage of my helpless state. We became friends. While I had my lavish wedding, Jillian chose to elope with her Prince Charming. Unfortunately, she wanted a wedding. She harbors a grudge against her husband for not allowing her this spectacle. I considered her a role model. Now all I have to do is pretend to smile when I talk to her. Despite all our warnings, she started an affair with Enrico Traditor. 
The more time she spends with him, the more dismissive she becomes of all her office friends. She was originally one of us. She did not hesitate to communicate with any women in the office, regardless of their position. After my bad date with Enrico, she was very attentive and caring in helping me deal with the consequences. I never told anyone what Enrico did to me. As she became more confident in her work, Jillian changed. Although she is friendly to secretaries and paralegals, she is now superior to them and treats us accordingly. It's not just about her. I think the environment contributes to this outcome. Once Enrico and Jillian began their romance, the disrespect on both sides worsened. The sad thing is that they didn't even try to hide their affair. Working with any of them was a challenge. Dealing with both, which happened several days a week, required a lot of patience. Enrico. I like women. Correction. I love having sex with women. I take great pleasure in these forbidden spells. A married woman is the best. They want sex just like I do, and there are no strings attached. This is the game we play, and I love this game. Yes, I am married. She's sweet, but I can't imagine spending my whole life with her. I worked hard to get her top prize. She is the only innocent woman I have had the pleasure of depriving of this. I had to get married to deprive her of this, but with the prenuptial agreement she signed, divorce would not cost me much. My grandparents left me a nice trust fund that is protected from claims. My latest project is Jillian. We work in the same office. When you hunt, keep your ears open. I heard that she wants a dream wedding, but her husband is not interested. This gave me the opportunity I needed. Breaking marriage vows starts with you treating her like a queen. Turning her view of her husband into that of a selfish bastard is the next step. The promise of a dream in exchange for sex is the ultimate goal. Jillian and I are heading to a conference, and we are planning to get married. I enjoyed marrying Jillian several times before this fiasco. I've seen better, but that's not how I describe it to her. Dario. My first job as a lawyer was at Blindheim and Robin. I left on less friendly terms when I refused to do something that I felt was unethical for Charlie Robham, whose name appeared on our letterhead. Charlie did everything he could to destroy my career. He tried to disbar me. Luckily, I have always kept paper and digital records of all my legal matters. They ruled in my favor and imposed sanctions on Robin. I was never married, but I was infatuated with one of the paralegals. Although Heather Cummins and I dated a few times, something changed, and she wanted nothing to do with office romances. I had intended to contact her sooner, but the amount of time I spent building my own practice didn't actually allow for it. Last week, I finally got in touch with Heather. To say that everything has been different since I contacted Heather is an understatement. Heather. Enrico called me into his office. I need a copy of the settlement offer ratters. Yes, sir. I'll bring it. In a few minutes. Here's your copy, Mr. Traditor. I said I need three copies. You are useless. Sorry, I thought that. The last thing I need is for you to think. Now bring me three copies. Are you smart enough to handle this? I turned to leave, but then Jillian appeared, entering his office. What's going on, Enrico? Our stupid little paralegal can't count to three. How are you doing, Jillian? Wonderful. Heather, can't we dress less shabby? Show some class, girl. Did you put on makeup while you were driving? The lovers giggled. I tried to breathe normally. Dario Atreant was one of the lawyers I liked at Blindheim and Robin. He left a few months after Enrique took advantage of me. We met several times, but after the incident with Enrique, I distanced myself from everyone. Dario is taller than me by a full head, and although he is in his early thirties, his hair has almost completely fallen out. He has a face that makes Mick Jagger look cute in comparison. This is shocking only at the first meeting. Then you realize that he is a very good person. Promises to keep in touch with Dario did not materialize. Until the beginning of this week, I received an email via LinkedIn from him. He indicated his phone number, and I called. Dario, this is Heather Cummins. Is it convenient to talk now? Heather, thanks for calling. Now is a great time to talk. How are you? 
I'm surviving, Dario. And you? It wasn't easy, but now I have a full schedule and a stable practice. We talked a little more before Dario said, Look, Heather, this is a little blunt, but if you're not dating anyone, I'd love to take you to dinner. I would like that, Dario. What do you think? If not on Sunday, then in two weeks. I'm leaving for Las Vegas on Tuesday morning for a week-long conference. Sunday will do. I'm also going to Las Vegas for the same conference. Jillian. Buttoning up her blouse and fluffing her hair, Jillian used her mobile phone in selfie mode to touch up her lipstick. Enrico was tucking in his shirt and lacing up his black Oxfords. I can't wait for next week, Jillian. Are you already looking forward to your wedding? Enrico, I think I would enjoy this more if we were divorced. How about we fill out and sign the paperwork? This should make me feel better. We can't get married while we're still married, right? We can tear up the documents before we leave this room. Heather, come here. Taking a deep breath, Heather noticed that Jillian and Enrico looked happy. Both looked very flushed. We need you to fill out a divorce petition for each of us. When it came to the division of property, the laughter did not stop. Keep the house for yourself, I'll move out. The laughter was constant. And the savings, keep them for yourself. They clapped each other's palms. Oh yeah, pay him $4,000 a month in child support. They both thought it was terribly funny. Their stomachs hurt from laughing. Seeing Jillian and Enrico disrespect their marriages was disgusting to me. Add all this to my petition, Heather. I can be as generous as you, Jillian. Heather used her computer to prepare the documents. She made two copies of each. Placing only one copy in front of each person, she said, You will sign as plaintiff next to the yellow bookmarks. Since each of you represents the other, sign next to the pink bookmarks. They signed and kissed. That's it, we're divorced. Heather, destroy these documents right now. Heather collected the documents. While the two were distracted by kissing, she placed them face down in a folder on her desk. Taking the unsigned copies, Heather slowly tore them apart. She sent one page after another into the shredder. That's all for today, Heather. Bring us each a bottle of water. On Sunday evening, I dressed a little provocatively. It had been a long time since I had been romantically involved, and it was time for a change. Heather, here. Hey, Dario, you look good. Kissing me on the cheek, he said, Me, look at you. Let's go. Our table is ready. Dinner and conversation went well. How are things going at Blindheim and Robin? Not good. I paralyzed two royal idiots. Let me tell you what they did on Friday. I went into detail and also told Dario about their plans to get married in Las Vegas. I explained what Enrique did to me, and that's why I pulled away from Dario before he left. His answers left me hoping that I could expand the boundaries of this relationship. Is the divorce petition still on your computer? You said you destroyed the copies, but kept the signed copies? Yes, both. Why? I think you should file them electronically. Scan the sheet with signatures and attach it. I will lose my job. I can't afford it. You could work with me. I don't know, Dario. I have feelings for you, and this might complicate things. Heather, I said you can work with me, not for me. This is my company, and if we want to start a relationship, we can do it. Besides, if this doesn't work out, your last employer will be me, not Blindheim and Robin. When do I need to decide, Dario? How about now? If you want your revenge, I can help arrange it. If they submit their petitions before they get married, it will make their intentions very credible. We'll have to find a way to file a marriage license from Vegas to seal their fate. Once the courts receive their petitions, I can contact their spouses and make the divorce a reality. I think the judge will be very against canceling the petitions if they have already been answered. Since we are all heading to Vegas on Tuesday morning, this needs to be filed tonight so the courts can process it tomorrow. If you have the spouse's contact information, I can contact them and explain their options. Family law, including divorce, is my specialty. His plan was cunning, but so sweet. The terms in the petition will empty their wallets. 
They both treat me like a secretary or receptionist, but not me. I am a professional quadriplegic. How much do your paralegals earn? What benefits do they have? If I promise to make you equal or better, will you agree? Agree. I'll go back to the office and start burning them at the stake. Besides contact information, what else do you need? I took notes and agreed to meet Dario for drinks after I did the sneaky deed. I cleared my desk, just in case. At the airport and during the flight, I worked on a hostile work environment claim. When I landed, I received a text message from Dario. There's news for you. Call me when it's convenient. I checked my luggage at the hotel and headed to my first conference. During the break, I tried to call Dario, but got on voicemail. Dario, this is Heather. My day ends around 16 o'clock. I look forward to speaking with you again. At 16.10, Dario called. Hey, Heather, how was your first day? Fine. I'm a little distracted by what we're doing. Me too. Listen, the divorce hearing is scheduled for next Monday at 9 a.m. I shouldn't rejoice in other people's misfortunes, but damn, it feels good. I was working on a hostile work environment claim. I'll email you what I have. Great. Are you free for dinner today? Well, I was thinking of attending a big wedding. If I can get a marriage license, it can be filed in Clark County. Oh my God, that would be amazing. Bigamists, do you mind if I join? We should hire someone to follow them and film everything they do tonight. Brilliant. Why didn't I think of that? Any ideas? No. You start searching, and I'll do this too. Call me in ten minutes. I spent the next few minutes calling around to available photographers. Unsuccessfully, I called Dario back. Good luck. I'm unsuccessful. I just received a message. Let me call you back after the conversation. In a few short minutes, we had a photographer. Arriving at. At the wedding chapel, I found Jillian and Enrico and offered my services. I noticed that Dario arrived and met with a woman with cameras, Irina. Dario said that Irina knew a private detective named Thad, and he had already installed bugs in their wedding suite. The wedding was luxurious. They spared no effort, and Jillian truly looked ecstatic to be living her dream. A death dream. Irina not only followed them, but also convinced them that she should ride in the limousine and take photos. They had no idea that she would also be making a video. I did my part, and, as a trusted paralegal, took custody of the signed marriage certificate. Clark County District Court was closed, but I'll be there first thing in the morning. The newlyweds went to their limousine. The newlyweds missed conferences for the next two days. They checked out of the hotel on Friday morning and attended the final sessions of the morning. The conference ended after the morning session and everyone headed to the airport. Dario spent two nights in my room. I've done my part. We were both worried that working together would strain our relationship. I'll do my best to make this work. Dario and I watched the video from Arena and Tata. The first was a trip back to the hotel immediately after the wedding. As soon as they pulled away, Jillian said, Enrico, I'm not wearing panties under this dress. Anything come to mind? Thad's videos were no less incriminating. Once they were in the wedding suite, Enrico treated her like a woman of easy virtue, but she was so passionate about her wedding that she didn't notice it. Dario composed emails for Coco and Carter, including a video. In the letters, he strongly advised them to avoid their spouses this weekend. We were waiting for their answers. Enrico and Jillian did everything they could to avoid their spouses over the weekend. Both called to say they were staying at the round table for the rest of the weekend and wouldn't be home until early Monday. They said they would see each other after work on Monday. The first email came from Coco. She wrote that Enrico was surprised by her emotional state and asked if everything was okay at home. The letter from Carter was similar. Despite his efforts to remain calm, Jillian seemed bothered by his uncharacteristic coldness and emotionlessness. He told her the deal had fallen through. With their alibi, Enrico booked a hotel near the office for two more nights of their honeymoon. As long as he let Jillian wear that stupid wedding dress, she was his slave and let him do whatever he wanted. 
when they entered the building on Monday, they were both immediately taken to John Blindem's office. The firm was served with hostile work environment documents filed by their paralegal. Heather, on Monday I took sick leave. My hostile work environment claim was ready to be filed. Dario personally delivered the documents to John Blindem at 9 am. Dario gave them until the end of the day to resolve the issue, otherwise the package would be filed in court. I sat in the courtroom when divorce cases were heard. Coco and Carter were present. Enrico and Gillian were absent. It is not uncommon for lawyers to be late for a meeting. The judge gave them until 9.30 to appear. Nobody came, and now they are divorced. At Dario's request, each of them applied for warrants prohibiting their ex-spouses from approaching their homes. He also advised them to change the locks immediately. He presented each of them with an invoice for his services. It was one dollar, which they gladly paid in cash. After leaving court, Dario said, Heather, we have a meeting at B&R at noon. I was so nervous that I couldn't eat. It seemed as if noon would never come. Dario left me in the conference room and went to the next meeting room. The walls were glass, so I could see him talking animatedly on the phone. He returned before any of B and R arrived. We got their attention. Charlie Robham plans to suspend my license. I recorded the conversation. Looks like we have guests. Jillian, with smudged mascara, and Enrico, with a stony face, each carried several folders. John Blindum and his personal assistant, Tara, followed. Neither I nor Dario extended a hand. Dario began, I am recording this conversation. John replied, So are we. Let's get down to business, Dario. This hostile work environment claim is without merit. My two employees are willing to testify that Heather was and remains a delusional, incompetent paralegal trying to profit from some made-up problem. Well, John, no matter what your staff says, I think you'll want to settle this matter. No way, lawyer. Do what you want. If you say so, John, when the jury finds out that your employees are bigamists, I think their credibility will collapse. Enrico and Jillian glanced at each other furtively. John's head tilted. Bigamists? Right. Two Fridays ago, before leaving for Las Vegas, each filed a petition for divorce. As you may remember from your court days, these documents must be approved by a judge before they can take effect. Your employees with brains like shit threw a lavish wedding on a trip to Las Vegas that you paid for. Their honeymoon prevented them from attending seminars for two days. I pushed a copy of the certified marriage certificate towards John. The Clark County seal was clearly visible. Jillian couldn't help herself. Both were a joke. We didn't submit anything. This bitch arranged all this. John shouted, Shut up. Dario pushed the signed answers towards John. John, perhaps contrary to your internal rules, Jillian represents Enrico, and Enrico represents Jillian. Both of their spouses agreed to the proposed division of property, and our responses were filed with the court. This morning, a judge approved the petitions, and they are now officially divorced. This means they were not divorced when they got married on Tuesday. I don't know if you remember the Contract Law 101 course, but let me remind you. Party A presents Party B with a signed contract. Party B signs and returns the contract to Party A. At this point, you have a contract. Do you recognize it, John? The look of panic on Jillian and Enrico's faces was perfect. Sweat poured from Enrico's forehead and Jillian cried, tears streaming down her face. She sobbed quietly, and now I understood what a broken heart looks like. Both were trembling, their breathing was ragged. While I am here, Jillian, this is a warrant prohibiting you from going near your previous residence. Enrico, this is a warrant prohibiting you from approaching your previous place of residence. John was furious. He unbuttoned his tie and was looking for something in his pockets. He took out a container of pills and washed down a few pills with water. Tara, call security. These two should not leave this office. John pointed not at me and Dario, but at Enrico and Jillian. Enrico was the first to break down, stood up and stared at me. I'll kill you, bitch. Dario stood up. Well, well, Enrico. 
Have you forgotten that our conversation is being recorded here? Tara, call the police. There is no need to call 911. Would you rather have Heather make that call? I'll take care of it myself, Mr. Atreant. John leaned back in his chair, his head tilted back. He breathed slowly but deeply. Dario urged him on. Johnny, let me know when we can continue. Three guards entered the room, acting decisively. One of them spoke up. Problem with these two, sir? He pointed at me and Dario. Idiots, when I need you to think, I will tell you. One of you will go clean out Jillian's office. One will clean out Enrico's office. Whoever remains, take these two to the office opposite. They must not leave him. John, pointing to Jillian and Enrico, sat back in his chair. Tara, call Charlie here. To say that Jillian was upset would be an understatement. Enrico was dangerous. Veins stood out on his forehead, his fists were clenched. Security escorted the two to their seats in an adjacent conference room. Charlie Robham entered with his personal assistant, Margaret. You look bad, John. Are you okay? Take charge of this matter. Adjust it. Adjust? Never. John raised his head. Trust me, we don't want this to be on the evening news. Charlie and Dario clearly had a history. Dario grinned as if he was saying, Fuck you. What do you want, Dario? An amount equal to everything Heather has ever earned here and a glowing letter of recommendation. Do not make me laugh. Ten thousand and get in. John couldn't help himself. Listen, asshole, we have two bigamists who had sex in front of her. Do you want to become the face of news reports? Now get your head out of your ass and sort this out. Dario's grin widened. What were the conditions again? An amount equal to one and a half times everything Heather has ever earned, and a glowing letter of recommendation. You speak equal. Yes, but you refused. I think we have a very strong case, Chucky. Margaret, get me Miss Cummins' salary history. After Margaret left, Charlie couldn't help but say, This will be the last time you go up there, you bastard. I'll get you. Mark my words. John screamed again, Shut up. There's a recording going on here. John began to breathe heavily. Tara looked worried. Do you need anything, John? He waved her away. Margot returned with several folders. Charlie spent time studying the pages. John, it will be more than 300,000. Can we talk about this in private? Good idea. Can you leave us for a minute? Dario stabbed the knife. We are guests here today. Why don't you two retire to another office? We're not going anywhere yet. The partners and their assistants left the stage, their eyes sparkling. I turned to Dario, but he raised his hand and pointed at the recording device. I was absolutely delighted. Three hundred thousand. My legs were giving way. Time dragged on unbearably long. Half the wait was over when the police arrived and took our statements. The officer closed the conference room door. Good afternoon. I'm Officer Jim Ringer. I understand Mr. Traditor threatened to kill Miss Cummins. Yes, that's right. I'm Dario Atreant, her lawyer on another case. I have a recording of his threat. His employer also has a record. Do you want to press charges, Miss Cummins? Yes. Tara was able to hold off the police long enough for Charlie and Robham to hand Enrico a notice of termination of the employment contract. Enrico was led away in handcuffs. Dario asked Tara to prepare a warrant protecting me from Enrico. After signing several forms, they were submitted electronically. Regarding our claim, it took longer than I expected. Margot came in several times and told us that they were preparing documents. We watched Margot deal with Jillian. Security escorted Jillian out of the building. Tara, unaccompanied, returned with a contract and a check. Here is Miss Cummins' payroll tape. This contract requires both parties to maintain strict confidentiality. Dario put a contract between us. I saw the amount and almost peed myself with joy, 316,000. I couldn't concentrate. I hope Dario doesn't need my help. Dario looked at Tara. Two things. 
First, I see that you are asking us to release you from liability, and second, you are limiting Miss Cummins to a non-compete clause. I don't see any mutual offer. We need this before we can sign. Any restrictions or concessions you want from us, we want from you. Tara collected the documents and left. Fifteen minutes later, we tried again. My hand shook as I signed the agreement. My palms became sweaty as I stroked the check. Charlie wanted to say the last word. I hope you die the most painful and slow death possible, Dario. Well, well, Chucky. You know that you have an obligation to report your two employees to the Qualification Committee. We may have a non-disclosure agreement, but their spouses do not. Did I forget to mention that I represent both? Have a good day, Chucky Just. I swore Charlie was having a heart attack. Security escorted us out of the building. My stomach was doing somersaults. How much do I owe you, Dario? Consider this my bonus for signing you, Heather. Let me talk to the spouses, and then I'll get back to you later today. Are you free for dinner? Come to me. I will cook. Jillian. Blindum and Robin pulled away from Enrico and me. Since they knew about bigamy, B and R were obliged to report this. The Qualification Commission recommended depriving us of our licenses. I tried unsuccessfully to convince the Commission that the marriage was a joke. I told them that the Clark County filing box was checked by accident. Since it involved bigamy, the marriage was quickly annulled. The Commission did not agree with me. Mrs. Facino, we have a very negative view of members of the bar who treat the judiciary as their playing field for practical jokes. Your services are no longer sanctioned in our state. No problem, I thought. I will take the exam in a neighboring state. It's only been a few years since I passed the bar exam. Arrogance can be costly. You would think that states wouldn't care if you were dislicensed in another state. But keep thinking like that. On my first attempt, without a refresher course, I realized I had failed the exam as soon as I finished it. I tried it in another state with similar results. I needed to take advanced training courses, but I didn't have the funds for it. I found a job as a paralegal, but couldn't afford to pay child support. What I earned was barely enough to cover my living and education expenses. I called Carter and begged him to meet so I could explain everything. We met in the park. Hey Carter, you look good. I can't say the same about you. It hurt. I tried to look attractive. I know this may seem superficial, but I'm sorry. I let myself down, which in turn ruined what we had. As it were, you could say it over the phone. Why the meeting? I need you to let me fall behind on child support. My license was revoked and I am forced to work as a paralegal. The salary is small and I need this money to take advanced training courses and take the exam in another state. Once I get a license somewhere, I can find a job that will allow me to pay you back. Can you not withhold child support from my salary so I can do this? You want me to take your word for it? Seriously? Why do I have to be so stupid? I can draw up a contract, a kind of addendum to our divorce. I wish I could explain how I could have been so stupid during those six weeks. I never thought of cheating on you, and then I became a complete toy for Enrico. I'm not asking for forgiveness. Hell, I can't even forgive myself. I want to get back on my feet, and I need your help again. Please. Send me your proposal by email. Is that all you have? No, I just wanted to tell you in person that I love you. Carter's face didn't change. He simply turned around and left. I cried for an hour before trying to drive home. I stopped on the side of the road and cried even more. How could I turn one of the most generous and loving people I have ever met into a cold, uncaring person? Carter signed my proposal and I set about getting my license where I could. Two years and several failed attempts later, I took the exam in another state. I had to move, but circumstances forced me to do it. I have resumed payments to Carter. The duration of alimony is not limited. I look at it as a debt I owe him to pay for my education. Enrico did not dispute this. He is no longer able to make decisions. Late one night, while leaving a pub, he received a devastating blow. He suffered severe brain damage and several strokes. 
His trust fund now pays for 24-hour care. The lights are on, but no one is home. Coco successfully sued Enrico to ensure continued child support payments. The police suspect that this could have been done or hired by one of the deceived spouses. Even Jillian was questioned. No one was arrested. Dario and Heather started dating, slowly at first, but got married 18 months after getting back together. Heather is expecting a baby, and if the baby isn't pretty, she knows why. Carter found a new wife within a year. It took Coco two years to start dating again. Jillian remains single. On her desk is a photo of her in Las Vegas in her wedding dress. Dreams die hard. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one. Click to the next one. Click to the next one.